Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to check out Game Guru. Now Game Guru may be the easiest to use 3D game engine on the market bar none. Um, I honestly can't think of anything that comes close to it personally, but there may be some options. So if you've got some alternatives, let me know down below. But anyways, Game Guru is a commercial game engine and just right off the front, let's just dispel any illusions here. This is not a peer to Unreal Engine, Unity, or even Godot. This is not targeted at the same segment. This entire idea is to be as beginner friendly of a game engine as you could create. And in many ways, they've actually achieved that. And one of the really nice ways they've achieved that is by giving people a ton of content or making a ton of content available for people to start with and to play with, etc. In a lot of ways, it's actually more like a mod for their own built-in game that you can then jump in deeper and customize to your own needs. And it's very much towards a first person or third person shooter style game. Uh, that's what the the defaults are all configured around, but as you will see in just a second, it is uh, very easy to use, at least initially. So without further ado, let's jump in, and then we're going to jump back out and get a look at some more of the details of it. This here is Game Guru. Now, I've got it from Steam. You'll notice that it is available for sale all of the time. And here we are in the editor in free flight mode. And you can see basically you can place your entities around the world. We'll get into the specifics of how to do this all in just a second. But you get an idea of how the editor runs, what it looks like, etc. And this is the most demanding example available. It shows their DX11 uh, PBR rendering support. It can be a bit of a pig. So if you're on a slightly slower machine, this might chug for you. Uh, you're seeing it right now on my 1080. So it runs just fine in that way. And what you do is basically create your game levels, etc. And then when you are ready to go, hit this little rocket ship guy, unless you're testing multiplayer, in which case you hit multiplayer mode. Uh, click that button. And here you see the default controls that it's configuring for you. So you've got a standard first person shooter style game implemented behind the scenes. Now again, you can go into the Lua files and change out how everything works. It, again, this is where I said it's kind of like modding. And then you've got a standard game in here. You've got AI controlling the various different entities that have been placed. And we'll uh, just run around doing some killing. All right. So this kind of is one of the examples, for example. Oh, okay, that was a little redundant. But this is the kind of thing that you can create using uh, Game Guru. Now let's exit out. And now let's go back into some of the actual details. And then I will dive back into how you use Game Guru. So... To that, over to our trusty browser. So once again, Game Guru is available at GameGuru.com, Game-Guru.com. I will throw that in the links down below. Uh, you've probably no doubt noticed this guy on Steam. It is always on sale on Steam. Um, if you pay more than 75% off, you kind of got ripped off. So do expect to see a sale available at some time. Now, right now, the fantasy bundle's on sale. The base game is not. As you see, the base game itself is 20 bucks US. Well, it's not outrageously expensive for the Game Guru game engine, but you see there are a ton of different um, asset bundles available. And I think what I was just using is the Death Valley Combat Pack. Um, but there's always bundles, and these, these bundle prices right now are outrageous versus compared to what you can often get. Now, the cool thing is when you start adding these asset packs in, you get a ton more content that you can basically just integrate into you know, a fun game you're creating of your own. I'm not 100% sure how the redistribution license goes on this, but... Um, you probably aren't going to be creating a game for redistribution beyond your friends using an engine like this. I look at this more as a, a for fun project, a local distribution type thing, not a create games for sale type game engine. Uh, now, you, you, perfectly, you may be perfectly capable of selling your game assets. I'm just not 100% sure on that. Now, another thing that's kind of interesting, and this was just recently launched earlier this year, is they've also opened up the source code for everything. Um, so it's not open source. No, don't want to be misleading there, but the source code is available. So basically, once you have purchased it, you send them an email, they give you access to the GitHub source repository, and you can build Game Guru uh, from source code. So if you are looking at making a more, um, well, a to ship title, or you want to get behind the scenes, the option is there. But this is not a full blown open source style project. Now, another interesting thing that they've recently released is the Game Guru Loader. Now, Game Guru Loader is actually a product for App Game Kit. They're more low-level game framework for making cross-platform games. And this basically allows you to create and load uh, level content that you created in Game Guru and then bring it into the app GameKit game engine for um, 
you know, additional logic, programming, scripting, etc. App Game Kit itself is both a basic and uh, C-powered uh, cross-platform game framework. So if you are looking at creating a, a commercial game out of your game guru authored uh, levels, this would probably be the way you would go. Uh, and then finally, and I found this one kind of strange, the documentation for Game Guru is lacking. The scripting manual is basically just an excerpt from the Lua 5.1 programming guide. And I found the best reference material here is actually this Steam post, which I found kind of shockingly strange. It does explain what all the AI commands do, uh, but you're kind of a little on your own about diving into the Lua API. Now, App Game Kit is much better documented, but the Lua side of the programming experience for Game Guru is a little iffy. All right, so let's head on back over to the Game Guru, uh, start a new level up, and this is basically where you would start from scratch. So we'll start with a new flat level, like so, and basically you start things off with a world editor. So here we are in a top town view. I'm gonna switch that into free mode, like so. And then you can basically raise and shrink the world as you wish. So basically I can start bringing up mountains, uh, so, and add detail to my world. And then as I wish to change it, I can come in here and go into the texture tool and then I can paint some, you know, varying texture to mix in with my height map. Let's crown that peak and then we'll just make all that, whatever that texture is, etc. So you basically start fleshing out your world by um, sculpting, you know, a height map. This is very traditional to a, a lot of game engines. So if you've worked with another game engine, you've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. You see the controls are available over here. So I can also do shift left mouse button to undo or to delete what I've done or to lower depending on what you're doing. So once you've created the world as you wish, what you're going to end up coming next is probably to entities. And this is where the strength of the app game kit downloadable content really comes in. I go here, I say, I want to add a new entity. And then this is all of the stuff that's available. Unfortunately, since I have some of the DLC, I can't tell you where the base product ends and the DLC begins. For example, I know everything included in these mega packs is, um, from DLC that I got as part of a sale. So you drag down in there and you see, uh, so I'll get out of that one for sure. But so here's a building pack and there's different buildings that are available. So if I wanted to put an, um, an office block into my game, I select office block, go okay. And then place it. So as you saw, there was an inside and outside. So boom, placed it in my world. And then now that it's placed, I can left click to select it. And then you can see the various different controls. So we can position, rotate, scale, or we can do properties. At the same time, you also got builder where you can basically uh, build new sites out of floors, walls, columns, apply textures to them, etc. And then finally down here, you have the Game Guru store, which allows you to actually connect to their store where you can buy and sell um, Game Guru assets that you've created yourself. Additionally, if you are in fact an artist, you can import your own models right here. I believe they come in as X format, 3DS or FBX. Um, so you can bring them in pretty simply if you've created your own. There is an authorship guide on how um, to bring in external assets. The process is pretty straightforward. Uh, but if you have no artistic ability and no programming ability, this entity setup works about as easy as it gets. Now, if you're going to stick with the traditional first person or third person shooter side of things, uh, we can also go ahead with their character builder. So we go down here. So let's bring, we want to populate our world with people. This is just like playing with a game. So it's the um, character creator. You head on in here. And it's just like creating your initial character in most modern video games. We come in here, we can create a head. Like so. Modify, give this poor girl some facial hair. Switch out the body. Like so. <sighs> da, 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 da. And give the head attachment. So let's give a hat. All right, so there's our character. We can go ahead and save our character. Uh, I'll call him Ugly Fellow. Like so. So that has created a character for use in our world going back here. So now that's just another entity. We come into the entity and obviously there is a bunch of characters they have defined. So we can go in here into characters and there's a bunch you can just get dropped in and go with. And I'll look at how you control them in a second. Well, let's bring in our character instead. So user, character creator, ugly fellow, and we'll bring in ugly fellow. So then matter of placing ugly fellow somewhere in the world, like so. So there is our ugly fellow. I don't think I defined a weapon, so that pose is going to be a little confusing, but uh, with them selected, you will see here, we can position them, etc. but what you probably want to do is go to properties. And properties is where you um, 
kind of control how this entity will work within the world. Again, if you've got no programming ability, well, you're kind of set up because they've got right here, uh, AI soldier Lua is the default behavior on it. So if I click here, we go to the dot, 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 and you'll see here is their script bank. Now they've written a whole bunch of Lua scripts that control various different entities in your world. So it could be uh, an object. So if we had an object that we added to the world, uh, we can put a move away script on it. Let's see, we've got uh, pick upable entities. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, for a character. So say we wanted to turn this guy into a zombie instead. We apply the zombie walk uh, character on it. And then if we go ahead and run our game, bum, 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 we should have a walking zombie control not really sure what that's doing, but that is the animation control that is applied to that character from that script. Now let's head on back over to the scripting for a second. Uh, I think I'm in the right, oh, I'm not, uh, it sucks. All right, C colon, program files, Steam, this is the downside of installing things from Steam. Oh, it's 86, yeah, I was in the right directory, Never mind. Uh, Steam, Steam apps. I'm sure you guys have navigated down to these folders a hundred billion times. Game Guru. All right. So files. And then here we are currently in the script bank. Let's bring one of those up. So AI, let's get one of the bigger ones. AI, okay, well here, AI fantasy character. And we'll just open that guy up in code. Now, if you use Notepad++, there is a set of um, extensions available that make it so you get code completions, et cetera, for their API. But you can see here, it's a very straightforward setup. Uh, if you've never used Lua before, it is a relatively easy language to pick up, probably one of the easiest scripting languages to learn. And in fact, I've actually done a full Lua scripting tutorial series in the past on this channel. Um, but you can see it's it's a very simple setup they've got. There's two calls that are basically called. There is a init function, which is called to create your character. And that's just basically setting a bunch of functions and variables for the default um state of your character and then you've got main and main is called every single round uh, to update what your computer is going this is basically the ai controlling this particular guy zoom that in a bit um, and you can come in and you work from their stock controls and then kind of modify it as you saw fit now you'll notice there's a lot of this path getting we'll get back to paths in a second it's another way to apply a logic to your ai control characters but this is um, basically the controls for a fantasy character Lua if you attach it. So if I wanted to give this control to that player, uh, back in Game Guru, I could literally just select our guy, go to the properties on it, and then we just change out to use that control script instead. Um, then you got another thing you can set. So again, this is set up very much for a first-person shooter style game. So the defaults are things like rate of fire. You can say if the weapon can be picked up or not. Uh, a lot of that will actually be set by this guy. So if I go here and switch this guy out to... Uh, our fantasy character. All right, I thought it changed things up. Doesn't. Okay, I thought it exposed variables. I guess I'm wrong on that one. But you can basically control your, there is your logic control. So now the next time I run this is a guy that it will be run by that AI script. Of course, what you're seeing here is you will have to jump into that script if you really heavily want to customize their behavior. Now, what you may want to do quite often though, as we come back here, uh, you probably want to set down markers. Now, markers are the ability to kind of um, add a little bit of logic to your game. So you can do things like player checkpoint, and then you can use those in your AI scripts to handle the same way as we've got trigger zones, sound zones to play a specific sound when you get to them, story zones to trigger story aspects, floor zones, etc. So this is these are ways that you can basically drop these in or paths. Now, where did paths go? I thought paths were right there too. Maybe it's its own mode. Yeah, I just say. Oh, yeah, pass. So we can basically create new waypoints here. And then we could. All right, never mind. Uh, we can basically set down paths that your AI is going to follow. So if you're creating, you know, patrol zones or you want to do a daylight cycle for your particular characters, you can draw them out in your game world. And then when you're ready to play your game world, click here and you'll notice in the overlay, there's these F9 and F11. So if I do F switch from game mode, edit mode, 
Okay. Uh, F9, I annoyingly enough cannot demonstrate uh, because it's also the hotkey for pausing and resuming playback of my video capture software. Uh, but anyways, trust me on that. You hit F9, it in-game enables you to make edits and change in placements so you can actually modify your game as you're playing it. A pretty cool feature. Um, so you do have some interactivity even while you're actually playing your game. And yeah, that's about it. It's a very straightforward, simple. Now, again, the real strength here is the huge amount of content that it comes with. So you've got a world editor, level editor, a bunch of DLC you could bring in to pre-populate characters. And again, you're not creating a AAA or even A-class game here. But if you're looking for an introduction to 3D game programming, or you just want to create games and you don't really care about learning the nitty-gritty details of creating content or of you know, learning how to program, this is actually a good entry level step. It's kind of like modding, but where the modding was purpose built to be an introduction to game development. And they routinely create these packs. And the cool thing, once again, is with that app game kit export option, there is a transition path out of here. So if you do like using this tooling set, or you do start bringing in content and working with content you want to actually create a full-blown game with, you can start exporting out to App Game Kit and actually create games for various different modern platforms using that game framework on top of this one. Now, of course, that's a separate purchase, but once again, App Game Kit is on Steam and it's always on sale as well. So you can get into um, Game Guru for very, very cheap if you keep an eye out for a sale. Now, I know a lot of you are going to like snigger at this kind of a title because it's probably not aimed at you. This is again, not an Unreal Engine or Unity competitor. This is more of a, you have a friend that comes to you and says, I want to learn how to create 3D games. Where should I start? Well, this is the kind of thing that's a great learning tool because you can literally start. They've provided a whole whack of assets for you to get up and going and up to speed. Uh, but then if you want to start getting under the scenes and you want to start you know, tweaking and modifying values, you can. You can start creating those new Lua scripts. And then you can go one step further and start authoring your own 3D models and bringing them in via X or FBX format. So then you can learn, you know, uh, how other modeling tools work, how uh, pipelines work, etc. Then you can also get into creating your own Lua scripts from scratch. So it is a great gameway tool for people looking to get started with programming. Now, the biggest shame that I find huge missed opportunities are twofold. Worst off, first off, and worst off, I guess, there should be an integrated Lua editor. I think if they want to encourage people to start going down that road, it would be very good if it had some kind of a built-in editor uh, attached, or even if it just shipped with something like Zero Brain Studio or IntelliJ. Well, I guess you can ship with IntelliJ, but one of the open source or freely available Lua editors pre-configured to work with Game Guru, that would be great. And on top of that, it just needs better documentation on the programming side. There's all kinds of documentation showing you how to, you know, create levels, create waypoints, bring and entities, even import entities from external content creation kits. But on the programming side, the documentation is pretty appalling. So two missed opportunities there, in my humble opinion. But it is still, um, yeah, I, I actually think it is the easiest 3D game engine out there. Uh, with all the pluses and minuses that gets. Now, I know a lot of people are poisoned against it because it has enabled people with no ability to create really awful games. But I always, you know, honestly, I think that's generally a good thing. And if those games are somehow making it onto app stores like Steam, well, that's Steam's fault, not the game engine's fault. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those things we have to kind of keep in mind. We shouldn't blame game engines for making game development easy for resulting in a bunch of crap games. We should really blame app stores for not curating their content because they were too cheap to hire staff. <coughs> Steam belt. <coughs> Okay. Oh, cough. Sorry, I coughed there. All right, well, that's it for now. Let me know um, what you thought of Game Guru. I know, again, it's not going to be for a lot of you, but if you've got a friend or you yourself are looking at just getting into 3D, this could be a great gateway program, which is why I decided to cover it. All right, that's it for now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you've got an opinion of an easier to work with 3D game engine or gateway to 3D game development, I'd love to hear it. I, I know there are other options out there, but I don't know of any of them that have the content available or that make it so easy to, to start with. So I would love to hear if you've got an alternative opinion on that. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.